You've heard the phrase, follow your passion. I heard the phrase as well, many times. In fact, it's a very popular phrase. It's a phrase that's supposed to mean, do what you love. It's a phrase that's supposed to give you guidance and direction on how to plan your life. It is used to encourage, you know, teenagers and people who are growing, people who are about, you know, to make choices about what do they, what they do and what they study and how do they chart the courses of their, you know, future. Why is this important? Because if you get this thing wrong, if you build your life on a wrong assumption or a wrong value or a wrong understanding then the consequences are almost dangerous because it's like you're planting a tree or you're building a building you're constructing a building that is tilted so eventually it will go in the wrong direction and it might even collapse but if you get it right and you put it in perspective then the chances are that you're going to have a life that is geared and oriented towards growth, towards prosperity, towards success. The word passion has had many meanings over time. One of its first meaning is pain and suffering. And you know this from the name of the famous movie, The Passion of Christ, means the suffering and the pain of Christ. Then it moved in another direction to, to, to mean love to mean um, something that you like doing to mean uh, a, a, an intense emotion of love in a positive way that's different from the pain and suffering in some cases also passion means an uncontrollable set of emotions when you have emotions that are so out of hand they're so intense not controllable that's what passion means. So they have different uh, meanings to this important word. The one that I the word that I want to discuss now with you is the most common word used in these these days, and that is that's meant to be you know follow what follow your love, do what you love. The problem with this is the following: What if, if what you love? Is not does not represent your strong point what if you're not very good at what you love I'll give you an example let's assume you are fascinated absolutely fascinated and passionate about a certain sport soccer or basketball or golf or baseball you name it and you really adore this game you watch you know hours and hours you spend hours watching this game you go to all the you know the tournaments and you collect stories and you follow the news of the main athletes who are the champion of this game but at the same time while you're doing so you're not in a position or shape number one to play this game number two to be good at it you're not you maybe you maybe even physically you don't have what it takes to master this game you even play it so you're passionate about this game but does this mean that you should take the, for the, the phrase follow your passion, i.e. follow your love, your almost blind love to this game to the extent that you can build your entire life on that? That's the danger. What should be, I think, communicated, I think this phrase should be corrected to the following. Follow what you're good at. Because what matters is that you build your life on doing what you're really good at so that you succeed in doing it, so that you do what, so that you provide a service that is valuable to others because you're proving you're brilliant in this, regardless of how you feel about it. Now, I'm taking for granted that at least you don't hate what you do. You're good at it, regardless. So it's not about feeling. It's about your commitment to what you do. It's like a soldier. Uh, I can't think of a soldier who's so passionate about fighting, you know, and engaging in combat that involves killing people or, you know, him himself or herself being shot at. I don't think this is a passion. But what matters is that they do that well. So the key thing, the key orienting philosophy should be follow or do what you're good at so that you can provide a brilliant service to others. <laughs> Do and follow what you feel you're responsible for or responsible towards. I'll give you an example. 
one of your family member has a major disease, a major illness, a major health problem that requires constant attention, paralyzed or any kind of unfortunate, you know, um, health situation. What's your sense of responsibility telling you? You have to attend to the needs of this person. And sometimes it may take an entire lifetime commitment to take care of this person. So in this case, you're following your sense of responsibility. Can I say you're passionate or can you say I'm passionate about doing this? I can't say you're passionate in the sense that passion means love here. What we're talking about in this case is feeling responsible. <laughs> Follow and do what gives you meaning because it's through meaning you will feel fulfillment. It's through your meaning that you will sustain yourself through the challenges and difficulties that will eventually face you as you're doing whatever you're doing, especially if it was difficult or it was something of great magnitude because everything that's worthwhile and significant will, 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 create, will create challenges, will have, you will face obstacles doing that. So when you have, when you're following something that gives you meaning, that will give you enough power. It will give you enough, you know, put you in the right mindset, give you enough energy so that you can overcome these challenges. The last point I want to mention of this is follow your purpose, follow your sense of purpose. And all of these, as you can see, they tie to each other, especially the three of them, purpose, meaning, and responsibility. Add to them what you're good at. Now, am I saying it's not nice to follow your passion, i.e. to do, I mean, to do things that you really love? Of course, do that, 100%, because they must be a great source of joy to you. But you have to distinguish between doing what you like or you're passionate about as a hobby and what should be the pillar and the rock and the foundation of your life, of your career, of your social, familial, you know, and uh, personal commitment that what should determine the path of your life and your identity in life. That life is short, it's full of challenges and hardships with beautiful moments of happiness. Life is not for the faint-hearted. Life is not for the mediocre. Life is to be lived to the maximum and the best way to do that is to put your entire heart, your entire capabilities, everything you have in it, so that you become good at it. And you use that as a contribution, as a source of service to others, so that you take your position in life. And for that, passion and emotion are not enough. Although they are important, but they're not enough. It is much, much, much deeper than this.